Okay, friend. Okay, so um, I am so excited to actually be here with you tonight. I'm super sad I'm not going to see you in like three days, but Hi. this is what they have to do. <laughs> I'm so sad. Too. Oh, go ahead. What? I said I'm so sad too. I know. Well, they're always changing the dates on us. So, um, you guys. Contrary to what a lot of people think, um, I always think people are like, oh, you know, you only are friends or with people that are in your business. Um, and really due to events, that is when I first met Bonnie was at our first dash. And I think from there we were like, we don't know how we got separated or how we ended up in different states, but we're just glad that we ran into each other. So from there, we just built this awesome sideline friendship and constantly are cheering each other on. Um, I feel like we were neck and neck for a while just pushing each other to the next step from presidential to ambassador and just always pouring positivity into each other. So to, I had asked her, I'm like, Bonnie, can you, I'm like, you're always inspiring me. I'm like, you have to hop on and just give me your words to, and share them with our team. And then she asked the same. Of me. So here we are, you guys, and we are excited to be here with you. And if you're on you guys, can you just make sure when you hop on that you're muted? Cause I am like ADD. So Okay, so anyways, Bonnie, oh, I muted you, Bonnie, sorry. You might just have to watch it. <laughs> there okay. you go. Okay, so um, Bonnie is an ambassador diamond, you guys, and I, she'll tell you how long she's been in, because I'm not even 100% sure. Um, top income earner, she is a busy mom of four boys, and I always say anybody who is a mom of all boys gets like a straight ticket to heaven, because that's been my week all week with my two. So the fact that you have doubled the amount I do, I still am like, I'll, I will worship the ground that you walk on. So um, Bonnie, will you just share a little bit of your story and how you found it works, why you decided to say yes to this $99 opportunity and kind of just what drove you and where did your journey start and where, what got you to today, I guess? Sure. Okay, so first of all, thank you for having me. She was like, would you do this Zoom with my team? And I was like, yeah, but would you do it? And we'll just double up on it because I love her equally as much from the moment I met her. So thank you, Sarah. And I love being on this journey with you. And I got started almost five years ago. So August 30th of this year will be my five-year anniversary um, with It Works. And I actually started as a customer. I was one of those people that saw a good friend of mine posting on Facebook and um, these products. Mainly at the time, it was before and after pictures, which I was one of those people that was like, are you scamming people? That could not be legit. Um, I had worked with this girl in the fitness industry. Her and I were um, personal trainers in the, in the fitness industry um, years before that. So I... I called her out. I basically was like, you're scamming people. These things don't work. You can't wrap. You have to exercise and eat well. Like what is going on? And she was like, Oh, I totally get it, Bonnie, but you have to try them. She's like, it's not, it's not what you think. It's not what weight loss. It really is like healing of the skin. And I was like, okay. So I tried a wrap. I didn't see results. Um, she told me I needed to try more. So I ordered as a loyal customer. And after, oh. Oh, can you guys hit mute, please? Yes. Sorry, and I'm like trying to find who that is. I think you can hit mute it. all again, and I can re undo it. Okay. Let me do that one more time. Okay. okay. We love the baby, so. I know. Okay. We do. Um, so I ordered some products from her for, from a, as a loyal customer. And one of the products that I got was the eye cream. And within three days of using that, I noticed the biggest difference. And I was like, wow, this stuff is amazing. I'm going to tell everybody I know about it. Um, and even y'all, my husband, he even noticed. And I always joke, I'm like, gosh, if your husband notices, like it's a big deal. You have something really great. So I signed up really on a whim. I didn't have much thought in my head about what am I going to do with this business. I just thought I love the product. I'm going to talk about it just the same as if I went to a restaurant and it was amazing food and a wonderful atmosphere and the service was great. Like I would go tell my friends about it and then they would go eat there. And that's exactly how I looked at this. I was like, I'm going to talk about it and I might as well put the money in my pocket because I'm going to use these products. And if I can make a couple hundred dollars a month 
on top of that, that will be amazing. So that's what I did. I signed up. I was one of those people that didn't do anything to my kit arrived. So I always tell people, don't do that. You have nothing you're waiting on. There's nothing magic. Um, just start talking to people. But once I did get going, it was really easy because I, at the time I was also using the fat fighters and, um, I had, I lost about five pounds in like a couple weeks. And so people were asking me, they were like, what are you doing? And that made it very easy to say, you know, I'm using these products and, um, and they all wanted them, of course, because everyone wants stuff that makes you look and feel better. So if you're not, if you're newer and you're not using the products, like start using something, you'll find something that you'll fall in love with. And, and what you want is for it to be like natural to just roll out of your mouth about it. You don't want to feel like a salesperson. And if you truly love what you're sharing, then you'll always feel like a shares person. So that's what I did. I just got excited about the products and I was working as a full-time nurse. So at work, I would take the greens and I would share pictures of my wrap results. I would, um, you know, ask my nurse friends. I'm like, just try a wrap. I want to see your pictures. I want to see if you'll get results after one. Um, things like that, you know, and, and so it was easy to get customers. I got like 22 customers in my first month just by doing those things. And about a month into this business, I found out that I was pregnant with my fourth child. And from that point, everything changed. I was like, I started thinking of the possibility of like staying home. And I saw people on Facebook that were doing those things, retiring themselves and their spouses. And I was like, gosh, I want to do that. So a boot camp came to St. Louis and I had worked a full shift um, the night before. And I went over to the boot camp right from that. I remember being like super tired, newly pregnant. Um, but you know, I thought, gosh, I really, if I'm going to try to make this like for real and like get myself home with my kids when I have this child, like I need to go figure out what this is all about. So I went in, I sat in the very back row, didn't know anyone felt completely out of place. Cause you know, it's like crazy. Everybody's so excited and green and black and bling and whatnot. But I remember being so inspired. Like I just remember hearing the stories of these people that were just like me. They were, they were, they were nurses, they were teachers, they were lawyers, doctors, stay at home parents. Um, you know, everything under the sun you could possibly think of were people sharing their stories. But the one thing was we all had something in common. We all wanted something more. And so I remember like having like tear filled eyes and chills. And I remember driving home and telling my husband, I'm going to, I'm going to stay home. I'm going to hit, you know, I looked at the chart and it was like double diamond that what could get me home. That was a good, a good place to start. And I remember thinking, I didn't even care like what that looked like. I didn't know what the chart looked like. I just remember thinking I need that income because I'm going to stay home and have this baby. And so my husband thought she's crazy. She's lost her mind. <laughs> But he saw that I was really serious and I was passionate about it. He was like, okay, well, you know, what do you need to do? And I'm like, I'm just going to copy what these people are doing. So that's the beauty of this business is that you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Like literally find someone that's your style and um, that you can connect with. That's a, you know, a leader that's done it before you and just copy what they're doing, you know, change it up a little bit. So it's not like verbatim when you're, if you want to use their posts, but literally just copy what they're doing, you know, find what works for you. I do a little bit of everything. I do a little bit of uh, blitzing. I, I love social media. I love meeting people. Um, I love bridal shows, like all of it. So we'll talk more about that in a minute, but that's um, exactly what I did. I started messaging people. I know there's a lot of new people on here and you might be thinking I haven't got a distributor before, but it took me three months, y'all three months to sign my first distributor. Um, and the thing was, looking back, I wasn't asking anyone. So I was getting customers because I was sharing the products. I was using the products and I was talking about them, but I didn't get a distributor because I wasn't asking anyone. I had this mindset at the time that was like, oh, I'll start doing really good and then people will come to me and ask me. But the reality of it was, was I couldn't promote because I didn't have any distributors because I wasn't asking anybody. So luckily, a girl actually came to me and said, you know, tell me more about what you're doing. Now, the funny thing is she thought I already had this booming team. So my social media presence was like the bomb because she already thought I was jamming by what 
I was putting out on Facebook, like our team's on fire. And it was like, just me. Right. Um, but I had that confidence. And so that's why she came to me and then she trusted me and she jumped in. And of course, like I ended up telling her like, you're my contributor. And that was, uh, but, um, <laughs> but, um, we were really excited. We started running together. Her and I made it look like we had this huge team as well. And we started uh, getting more people to, to jump on board. Um, but it took me four months to hit Ruby. It took me, I think, six months to hit Emerald. I missed the um, diamond bonus um, the first time. And then they extended it that, like, next, you know, conference or whatever. And I didn't go to that conference because I was pregnant. And, like, honestly, I didn't know much about it. I was only, like, three months in. And I didn't go. But, um when you know I heard the extended or whatever I had to hit him I had to hit diamond by April I hit emerald and I remember thinking for like two seconds man that stinks but here's the thing it, it, the bonus wasn't the reason I was working double diamond was the reason I was working so I, I did I thought like I said I got down for like a split second and then I was like you know what that's okay that's just a little stumble on my journey because I'm going double diamond and I never lost focus of that. I never, I never got down about it. Um, a lot of people hit it around me and it was okay because the next month I hit diamond and then two, let's see, two months after that, or I had my son the month after that, which was June. And then, so then the following month I hit double diamond. So 10 months into the business, I hit double diamond and, um, I got to quit my job. So that to, to me to date was like the best promotion because you know, money is awesome, but money just allows choices. Like your, your time is everything. You don't, you don't get that back. And I wanted desperately to be able to be the one that was home with my baby, you know, home, getting to see him do things for the first time and not having someone else tell me, you know, oh, this is what your child did today. Or this is, he said, mom for the first time or rolled over for the first time. And that I would miss that, um, that broke my heart because I, I, I've lived that life before. And it's, it's hard, especially as a nurse, because, you know, as a nurse, you can work three back-to-back -back shifts and I rotated days to night. So I would do six weeks days and then six weeks nights and your body and your mind and everything is just off. And so then you try to turn around after that time and go and be like a great mom, but you're exhausted. I remember working all night on Christmas Eve one year coming home on Christmas day. And of course my kids were awake and wanting to open their presents. And I was like a zombie, like, you know, falling asleep while they're doing it. And like, that, that's not any way to live. That's not how I wanted to live. So I remember all the time, even driving to work, praying, like, please Lord, give me an, give me something that I can do because I love my job, but I miss my kids. And so I, I tell everybody, if you have that something, um, that drives you that much, like nothing will get in your way. Nothing, no, no excuse, no anything, nobody saying anything. Like there's literally zero that will matter. That will change the, the path that you're on uh, because you, you have that reason. So if you don't, then I would highly suggest that you really soul search and figure out what it is you started for. And if it's for products, that's okay. This can absolutely be hobby money. It really can. But if you're, you know, thinking I want more out of life, then figure out what it is that's going to drive you to do more so that you can have that. But so, yeah, so I hit double diamond and then that was July. And I remember sitting up one night, uh, nursing my son and I started crying in the middle of the night and my husband woke up, you know, and he was like, what does the matter? Like, aren't you happy? And this was a defining turning point in my business. I said, yes. I'm so happy, but I just wonder how many other mamas want this life. How many other mamas are living what I was living and where they feel like they're spinning their wheels and they're not getting the time with their kids. Um, and you know, they're missing out on everything. And so up until that point, it was about me and getting me home with my kids. And that night there was this shift and it was like, I couldn't stop talking to people because I, everybody I'd see, if I see them at the park, the grocery store, whatever, I'd be like, you're a mom. I got to talk to you. And I would just start talking to everyone. I was like the crazy coupon lady. 
um, because I needed to tell them like, this is an, this is an amazing vehicle that can change your life, you know, but I couldn't go up and say that because they'd be like, that lady's crazy. So you have to make the connection. So what I would do is I would just say something like, you know, if, if I was at the park with them, you know, just start talking to them about their kids or whatnot, and then say, are you on Facebook? And if they said yes, I would just say, you know, I think depending on how the conversation went, but one thing I might say is I think you'd be amazing at what I do. I'd love to just send you some more information. Would you mind if I added you? I've never been told no, but that all goes back to making that connection first. If I went up to them and go, hey, you should join my team. It's $99 and you get this and you get that. They'd be like, peace, like you're crazy. So just make the connection and add them. And that's what I started doing. And from there, I blew up. So I remember going into the fall and people said, oh, you cannot promote in the fall. Um, I, had a, I had triple diamond built by mid-November and they had these cash bonuses that year. And so I was on track and I don't remember what it was now. It was like maybe 1500 or 2000 or I don't really remember. But I remember I was built for it. And I had just finished like the last emerald leg or something. In, in that triple diamond chart and the girl that I basically helped build to Emerald. I mean, she was a little cuckoo, but she called and like canceled her spots a week before the end of the month, like canceled it. So I couldn't even use that Emerald leg in the charts. Um, and I remember bawling, like just crying, going, Oh my gosh, like I'm built for triple and now I can't hit it. I've been saying I'm going to hit triple. And so I, what I do, I, I cried that night and then the next day I got up and I said, I'm going to get this done. So I looked through that leg and really the only person that was really signing people was an executive in that leg. So I called the executive and I said, do you want to go Emerald this month? She's like, we have like a week. And I was like, yep. Do you want to go Emerald? And she said, well, yeah. And I said, all right, here's what we're going to do. And like, we got this plan of how many people we needed to talk to every day that we were going to, you know, we were sharing the chart. We were literally back and forth. And I mean, she was brand new. So I'm spoon feeding her everything and three way calling and all this stuff, but y'all, we got it done. And I hit triple diamond that month and she hit emeralds and that was a week time and it was in November. So don't ever let someone tell you that you're working into a, a slow time or that you can't build as fast as you want, because honestly you can, it just depends on what you're going to do for it. So that happened. And then after that, um, I had a huge explosion in my business in December, signed a ton of people. And then I, we went to conference. That was my first conference. So I went to my first conference as a triple. And I remember them coming out with like the bonuses that year and saying it was $50,000 for press. And now at the time I was pretty far away because remember I just hit triple. And so my paycheck wasn't even like average of what it is on the charts, but I didn't like my mindset was so focused on, I'm going to help everybody. I know that this is just going to fill itself in. And so I really think that matters if you're working towards, are you filling in a chart so you can promote? Are you, are you working because you want to help change a whole lot of lives? Because when you think like that, you breed that passion. Like it's just energy and it's all around you and people want to be a part of that. Like they, they ne might not necessarily even know what it's all about, but you've got so much passion and fire that they want to be around that. So, um, I didn't even think twice about it. I said to myself, um, and, and my part, one of my partners that I ran with, cause she was, um, running right behind me. Every time I would promote, she would promote. We looked at each other, we cried and we were like, all right, we know we got this. And we basically had that, you know, month and a half to do it. And, um, so I went from an under average paid new triple diamond to a presidential diamond. Um, what happened here? I don't know. Hold on. Tracy, it says you are screen sharing. <laughs> well, you can still hear me, yeah? Yeah, we can still hear you. I don't, know awesome. that, I don't know what that means, but maybe she can exit that. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, I'll keep talking. So I, anyway, I, I hit Presidential Diamond at the end of March, and I will tell y'all that the craziest thing happened, I mean, of course, I was super excited about the bonus, but the craziest thing happened, and I don't like to throw numbers out, but we're on a team call. My check in January was like, I think it was around 11,000. 
as a new triple, and my check from hitting Prez after that month was $36,000. And I thought, what the heck? You know, like that is like mind blowing. Like that's more than I made in a year basically, or the same as a nurse in that, in that one month. Um, and I thought, well, we're not, we're not done. We're, we're not stopping. Like there was no, I'm Prez, I'm comfortable. It was, let's go master. Like, let's go. And so five months after that, which was a year or which was two years to the day of my start, I hit ambassador on my two year anniversary. So, um, but the, here's the thing. I let every single promotion fuel my next one. So a lot of people I feel like get to their promotion and then they're like, Oh, this money's mind blowing. And I could have totally done that. Right. I could have totally, I could have done that at 11. Like that's mind blowing money. I never thought I would see six figures in this company, but when you start like dreaming bigger and I'm not saying like monetary things, but just like, what can you do with it? You know, what, what, write that down. Like if I had $11,000 checks, what could I do with that? Okay, well, I could start saving for my kids college, we could start, you know, a retirement fund, we could start saving for our dream home, like whatever, you've got to let yourself dream, because if you're not, you don't really have a plan. You know, you're kind of like a, you're kind of like on, I always say on a road trip without a map, you're just kind of going through the day. But if you know where you're going, You've got that chart in front of you. You've got those steps in front of you. You know, I always thought people were crazy. They'd say, oh, get those steps of success out and write it all down. I'm like, why? Like, I got it in my head. I know what I'm doing. It matters. If you are actually writing down Sarah, LC, Kara, DT, you're writing that down. Like, there's something that just fuels you. And you're like, okay, I got to get this finished. So today I finished my steps this month. And now I'm like, it's time to do it again. You know, and it just every month, even as an ambassador, like it's, it can be easy to sit back and just relax, but I don't think like that. I think who is out there that needs me now. And so when I go out and about my day, that's what I'm looking for. Like if there's somebody in this, in the, you know, grocery store line or something and they're counting change or coupons, I'm going to give them a coupon. I'm going to, I don't know what they'll do with it, but they might do something. My new distributor, I don't know if she's on here tonight or not, but I met her husband last year. Um, I bought a car from him and he was the nicest guy and we just like chit chatted and I gave him a card and I said, this is what I do. I said, I really love my business. I said, I don't know what, you know, if you're, if you or your wife are looking for extra income, but I love helping people do that from home. And he ended up telling me she was a nurse. I'm like, Oh my gosh, I'm a nurse. And so we had that connection and then she friended me. And I didn't know who it was when she friended me. So I messaged her and we started chatting and then I put it together that she was, you know, Joe's, Joe's wife. So anyway, uh, she just signed up today and that was over a year ago. So don't think too, like you're just because you're planting those seeds. Sometimes it takes a while to harvest. You got to plant, you got to water. And when you water, you got to stay consistent on that watering. Like if I go back and look through the messages, I've probably messaged her, I would say, 15 to 20 times that we've gone back and forth. And so don't, don't give up on that. Cause you never know when it's the right time. Like she said, she just had a lot of like, you know, excuses and stuff because she was scared and um, that's okay. Everybody's scared. Cause this is like something totally abnormal. Right. Right. So yes, that's my well, story. Your story is amazing, even to follow. Some of it, I don't even think I knew. That's why I love doing this, but I don't think I even knew your beginning part of your story. Um, okay, I have to answer one of the questions because I think it's actually, or have you answer it. Okay. It's good, but she just, somebody was asking, they would love for you to share what your plan looked like with that executive when she went Emerald in a week. Okay, so. Three people on here. Okay, so she was, remember she was brand new. So she had a huge foreign market. So here's the thing I always tell people that if you've been in, like your seasons are different. You know, Sarah and I season at this time looks very different than a brand new distributor on here because we're constantly working a cold market into a warm market. But you guys that are newer, you have this warm market. So we utilized her warm market. Most of that chart ended up being her people that I coached in. Um, because that was easier. I did sign a couple of the distributors um, myself from my market, 
but um, it was basically like, get your friends on the phone. Who do you think would be good at this business? And she would say it and I would say, all right, set up. And I would just say, call them and tell them this time or this time. And that you have to get them on the phone because you know that they would rock this business. And that team ended up really doing well and blowing up for a while. Um, and so, but that's what I did. I did Sorry, who is that? Okay. Is it Echo and me? No, I think I got it. It was just somebody that wasn't muted. I got it. Um, I think. But that's what I did. I just helped her. I just helped coach um, her to get people in. And I still do that to this day with new distributors. Like if they have people that they think would be really good, then we set up a three-way call or sometimes I'll do a zoom. So one time I had a girl say, Oh my gosh, I have like 10 people interested. We just got on a zoom and that way I could talk to everybody and answer their questions. Um, but, and we didn't have the online parties back then. We used to do it where we put a picture up and stuff, but I did a whole lot of that because that's a great way to get customers too and distributors. So we did a lot of that with like people she knew, but those online parties today are awesome. So I've been trying to do one of those about every other week right now. And they are, um, they're really beneficial because there's so many people that go, Oh, I was interested in products. And then I heard you talk about the opportunity and then they want that. So, um, I think Honey, are when you're doing your online parties now, are you doing it where you post or are you doing it where you're live? Live. All of it. The whole thing. Yeah, the whole thing. Okay. Yep. So that, I, I'm I usually sure take like, i say about 20 minutes. I don't like to keep it real long. So mm -hmm. I go over some products, talk about the products, talk about the company, how long has the company been around that we're debt free, where we're going, how they're in 22 countries and expanding. And then I share a little bit about my story and then I talk about why it's like an amazing time to, to get started and then wrap it up. So no back to who invited them, welcome them. That's it. And I love that you say that it's like 20 to 30 minutes because honestly, you guys, most people just like you and I, even when I work this business, like I don't sit down necessarily for hours and hours at a time because that's just not my lifestyle right now. That's just not what I can do. So you also have to remember that if it's hard for you to sit down for longer than 30 minutes, like somebody who's not in this business, it is going to be very hard for them to do that or even longer. So I love that you said how you kind of keep it short. You focus on the things that you love and you're in there and out there, but I think them hearing from you and actually getting to hear your voice and seeing you as a person is a huge thing. So for many, oh, yes, yeah. it's scary, but the more you do stuff like this, you guys, I used to sweat even thinking about a Zoom. Now I'm like, oh, <laughs> we do this stuff in our sleep, but you just have to start somewhere, like 100%. So um, Bonnie, this was the other thing. I have a lot of people that were asking, they obviously know you're busy. You have four kiddos. They are active. They, you've had, you've gone anywhere from this business now that I even know it since you were pregnant, but you've gone from baby all the way up to you have older children. So, you know, how did you have the mindset of being like, I like, yes, I could have a bazillion excuses. We always say we have, we, you could probably find more excuses or reasons not to work this business than to work it. So how did you like integrate that into your busy lifestyle? Like, did you, you know, commit to doing something every single day? Did you do a certain time? Did you wake up earlier? How did you do it so that you weren't going a day or, you know, finding yourself three days and you hadn't touched your business? Right. Okay. So, and that's looked different throughout the, throughout the seasons of my business, because obviously I was working full time when I started. Mm -hmm. I remember, you know, again, I was pregnant. So it was like normal that I had to go to the bathroom a lot. <laughs> so I would just take my phone in there and that I would put like send out messages. So I'd, I'd get up, put my post up and then like send out my messages. If I went to the bathroom, um, sometimes I'd go to the bathroom just to send out my messages. <laughs> And then, you know, if I was lucky enough to get a lunch break, cause that's kind of a joke when you're a nurse too. But if I was, even if it was five minutes, I would check at that time, like messages or message people. Um, and I would just make it a goal. Like before I went to bed too, you know, then I, I spent an hour or two before I went to bed, even if it was when I came home during the day, if I worked at night, I would, I would take my shower, sleep for about three hours, get up, work for one to two, go back to sleep for like an hour and then go to work. I know it was crazy. And I think back to that time all the time, even because I was pregnant, you know, you're extra tired. And then when I was nursing, I remember one night, like getting up in the chair to feed him because sometimes I just get up in the chair and, and I would get on my phone at like 3am sending messages. My friends probably thought it was crazy. 
but it was when I was awake. And then I remember one night, this was funny, I, I fell asleep. And then he was like rooting around again. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I just fed you, kid. Like, how are you hungry again? And I looked down, it was two hours later. And I was like, oh my gosh, we just slept in the chair. So that time frame I know was a little bit blurry, but like it is anyway when you're a new mom, right? Like you're barely sleeping anyway. So just add that on to it. I don't know. I say it all the time. I'm like, I don't know. I think it was just pure God because I, there's no other like way to explain how I did that all, um, honestly. But now, I mean, here's the thing. In where I am and, and what I'm doing, this is my, this is my career. I have two choices. I can sit back and do nothing and ride the residual, but my team's going to follow that. And then it's potential that I could fall apart because we're not at beach money yet. Like five years in, you know, we've, we've got some more work to do, um, for at least the kind of beach money that I'm going after. And so, um, I'm not going to, I'm not going to make that choice. So I can like go, okay, well I can ride this out and then go back to nursing because you know, how long are you going to get with it? Or I can choose to work this as my, as my job. So you have to look at it like you're going to clock in, you know, and it doesn't have to be every day, all day. So right now I have help with my children two days a week. So during those two days I get my workouts in and then I will go a lot of times I sit in my car, um, in the parking lot. I know that sounds really crazy, but like Sarah, I'm like ADD city over here. And so if I'm at home, I can go, Oh, I need to clean. I need to do laundry and do this and do that. And I just get so distracted. But if I sit in a parking lot somewhere in my car, there's nothing to do. So I just turn on my music and I could spend five hours just messaging people, following up with people, um, you know, friending new people. Um, one thing I'd love to say is that if you're, and not adding people to your network every single day, like you're messing up. That's so important. Even as a new person, start getting that cold market warm right away. It's so important. And I wish I would have known that from the start. Um, but those things, okay, the days I have my kids, I'll get up and I'll, you know, drink my coffee. I'll read some positive affirmations or I love reading Jesus calling something that gets my mind right. Right. Because we wake up already telling ourselves we're awful and, worth nothing and can't do this business and whatever. It's just your mind, but get up and do something like that and get your mind right. And like, look in the mirror and go, I am a bad, you know, person. <laughs> like, <laughs> I won't cuss on here, but you know, get your mind right. And like, tell yourself, like I'm a distributor and rolling machine. Everybody wants these products and um, really speak life over your team and over your business. And um, because it, energy is powerful. Like what you're putting out there, you're, you're going to get. So if you're putting out negative, like I can't do this, I'm no good at this. Um, I can't get to diamond. Like, yeah, bad mama jam. <laughs> yeah, there you go. That's it. Um, that's what you're going to get. But if you're putting out there, like my business is booming, we're on fire. Like we got solid team. We're all together. We're running together. You're going to have that. Or if you're saying I only enroll duds, you're only going to enroll duds. You got to say I enroll rock stars because I am a rock star. And I can't remember who told me this advice, but it was very good advice. If you think that you're a person that keeps enrolling people that aren't getting the vision and aren't moving, then take a piece of paper and like write down what you want in a distributor. Mm -hmm. So I want someone that is consistent because consistency is key, right? Mm -hmm. I want someone who's excited. I want someone who's motivated. I want someone who's positive. I want someone that sees the vision, you know, whatever. I want someone that is inspirational. Um, someone that can, will be a good leader, like write down all of those things and then look back over it and ask what, what on that piece of paper are you and like put check marks by what you are. And you'll be surprised a lot of times, like you'll, you'll be like, Oh my gosh, well, I'm not being that way. So if you're not being that way, you can't attract that. So you want to make sure that that's where you work. So let's say, and I am consistent, but I'm just going to give you an example. Let's say that I look at the word consistent because I wanted somebody that's consistent because that's, it's everything. Right. And I'm like, well, gosh, I'm not consistent. Well, then I'm not going to have someone that is because my team is following me. So the example that I'm setting has, is what they're going to be, what they're going to be doing. And it's weird guys. They know, they know if you're not working, they know. Um, I think it's just that energy again, but okay. So the days that I don't have my kids, I'll put in long hours like that. The days that I do have my kids, you know, like I said, I'll get up, I'll, I'll do all that stuff. And then I'll 
decide what it is, you know? So on Mondays, I usually start my week by new people. And then on, you know, Fridays, I do follow up Friday. So that's just me. You can find what works for you um, to kind of get in a groove for yourself. And then on the weekends, um, I love to spend my time with my family. So I do, I just work a little bit here and there around whatever we're doing. And that could be, I, I take a call, you know, to sign somebody new up or whatever, but then I turn my phone off. So don't let anyone try to tell you there's not balance in it. Nothing's 50, 50, you know, nothing in life, but like, just, just figure out your priorities, you know, figure out what you're going to do and when you're going to do it and everything will fit. You just have to figure out when and where, and it doesn't have to match somebody else's. It doesn't need to be a nine to five. It could be, like I said, five hours straight one day and 30 minutes one day. When it's school, um, even in sports, we are in the car all the time because our kids are very active in sports and whatnot. Um, and so, you know what I do? I'm sitting in the carpool line to pick them up. I'll send some messages. And then, um, you know, when I drop them off at sports and we're there, like, I'll watch them. But, like, I can also – I can, I can also multitask and send messages and stuff. I don't do that at the games. I'll always turn my phone off at games. But at practice, I say sometimes mommy has to work a little bit. And they, they know. They're like, that's okay, mommy, because you're here. But at games, I just make it a priority. The phone is off. So you see what I mean? You, there's total balance in there. You just figure out, you just figure out how it's going to um, work for you. But, again, remind yourself, okay, if you're home, you have to tell yourself, I could go back to nursing or I can work my business, right? Mm -hmm. And if you're, you know, if you were a stay-at-home mom, but you needed that extra income, then you can think I can go get a job doing X, Y, Z, or I can work my business. And once you just kind of make up what you want to do, um, you know, you're not gonna, you're not gonna make excuses because I mean, I want to sit in like yoga pants, right? <laughs> <laughs> right. I just told Kevin that I go, I literally had a different outfit on. I go and I throw on my It Works jacket and he goes, if people only knew what you were truly wearing right now, and I'm like, I know, I'm like, this is how it is working at home. I'm like, I'm obsessed yeah. with it. <laughs> yeah, me too, girl. I had a sports bra on and yoga pants. Yeah. I was like, well, she'll probably appreciate it if I actually put a shirt on. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we would still appreciate you even if you were sitting like that. That's okay. <laughs> um, okay, I think you are, I've always loved, like, one thing that I was so attracted to was your confidence. Like, I was like, this girl, like, I know who I'm getting. Like, I know that who I met has never changed. Like, you do not waver. And I just think that that is so, so important about just using you as, like, your biggest tool in this business. And so for a lot of people, I think they're so scared, A, to put it out there, which you are not at all. And so I was just thinking that, I'm like, what, what is your message when you send to somebody? So I have a hard time with this for the fact that I'm like, I don't use a script like ever. My messages are all different. So when people are like, what do you message? I'm like, well, let me show you like six examples, but they're all different. And I kind of do that on purpose because I'm like, don't be a robot. Like if there's something that you're going to stand out compared to all the other options that are out there for people right now, I'm like, if you're you and you are confident in that and you don't waver, like people sense that. Like if you're going to take a chance, you want to join somebody that has confidence in if you never question, okay, is Bonnie doing this business still? Like I can go to your thing and I a hundred percent know like, oh, she just welcomed a teammate or, oh, she's, you know, she's talking about a product that she likes or whatever it is. So if you just give like kind of an example of, or even maybe your thought process through of like starting that message with somebody and then just how you seal the deal, like what's your follow-up process? You know, I know just like, I'm so glad you said that about today. Like just because you plan to deceive, sometimes it takes a year you know, yeah. for it to come, but we don't ever stop and wait for that one person to say yes. So I think if you share that, they, you've hit a lot of the other things I was going to ask you, but I think they would love that from you. And I like it just because like I said, you just don't waver. You are who you are and you use it well. Oh, thank you, girl. Um, yeah, I mean, I think I change my messages all the time just because I don't like to spam. I really like to be intentional. So let's say when I'm adding people, I'll talk about that a little bit. Um, okay, so on Facebook, I am only going to add people that are that I have something in common with that I would actually want to be friends with. So how do you find those people? Well, you can go to like, um, if you like a certain band, like, okay, I love Kenny Chesney and Eric Church. So I can go to their page, I can find something that they posted, and then click on the likes, and then just like go through the likes. And then when I see, I mean, I'm only going to add females, I'm not going to add guys. So when I see like a female, I'm like, oh, she looks cute or she looks fun or something. I'll click on her page. 
and then I'm going to look through her page. I want one, I'm looking to make sure that it looks like she's actually active, right? Um, so she's on social media and then I'm going to make sure she's not in another company because if she's already doing something, then she already has a business and she doesn't need this one right now. So I'm not going to add anybody that's in another company. And then, um, you know, just, I want to make sure that she's not like a, ne a negative Nancy because I don't want negative Nancy's. I don't want to be a counselor. I don't want to try to convince somebody why this will work for them. I want somebody that is excited about an opportunity. So let's say that I, I found Sarah. And then I would look at her page and I would see that, oh, it looks like she has fun with her family. She looks outgoing. She looks like she's active. She's not in another business. We'll pretend, but <laughs> um, then I would add her. And then um, I would write, well, you don't do anything until they friend you back. So once they accept, then I write their name down. And you can either do that on the calendar, like if anybody's doing that calendar method, then I would put it on the day. So I do both because if I'm sitting at my desk, I'll use my calendar. But if I'm sitting in my car, I use my notes section in my phone. And so what I would do is just write Sarah O'Connell and I would write today's date beside her name. And then I'll put in parentheses where I met her. So if I met her at the grocery store, if I met her at the park or if I met her on Facebook at right now, which I'm talking about, then I would just put random FB. That means random Facebook. Um, and then I know that I need, I have planted the seed because now we're friends. So now I have to water the seed. So how does that look? I'm going to go to her page and you can either click see first. You can only do so many, so you kind of have to like rotate it around, but I'll click see first. And then um, when she posts, it'll come up in my news feed and then I'll like and comment on it. Don't just like it. Like you want to actually start building a relationship and building that trust and like making her see like you're a fun person. So let's say she put up a picture. Well, today she put one up with her boys. I would like it and then I would say, oh, that's so cute or something like that with a little heart, okay? Nothing about it works because right now I'm just working on our friendship because she's a cold market, right? She's a cold market and I got to bring her to warm market, but you can only do that with trust and building the relationship. So if they, if they friend you back, you definitely are not going to send a message about your team or products or anything because they're going to block you right away. So do that for a time and you'll, you'll know when, like just judge it. Just say, okay, she's interacting back with me. She's starting to comment and like on my stuff. That's when you kind of know that you can go somewhere else. So if she's done that, and it, this could be like a week, it could be a couple months, like you just have to judge. But until then, you're still in the watering stage. So nice plants just take a little bit longer to, to bloom. So, so she started interacting back with me now. Now I'm gonna send her a message. And this is, is it'll sound something like this. Hey Sarah, how are you? I'd love keeping up with you on Facebook. You're so inspiring. I think this would be amazing at what I do, have you ever considered it? Heart. And that's it. I never say it works. I never say join my team. I never say sign up. It's $99. Like nothing like that. It's very short. It's very simple. Um, and just see what she says. And she may say, well, I don't honestly know what you do. Well, there's the door. And if that's the case, if she says, what do you do? Which I get a lot. Um, then I will, I will use voice message because I want them to be able to hear my passion and my excitement about my business and you can't get that from text so i always use voice message once we get to that next step um, and then i always say hey if you'd like we can chat on the phone i know sometimes it's hard like messaging back and forth um, but i'd be happy to chat with you on the phone and so actually i have a girl right now that's texting me that i met on um that I met on Instagram and so I was gonna read what I wrote to her because I haven't been um, super crazy on Instagram that's been something I've had to learn and it was really difficult but staying consistent on that has really helped me and I'm starting to sign quite a few distributors from it um, and so I'll tell you what I say there now make it your own because I you know change it up or something I don't care if you take the concept but I don't want to be spammy please just know that whatever you're doing Make it personal and do not spam and make sure you know who you're messaging. I don't think it's smart when people are just messaging um, a million people a day. Like really try to be intentional and consistent. But this is what I say. Hey, Courtney, totally rained in my know, but I love following you on here. And I think you would be amazing at what I do. Are you interested in hearing more about it? Every single time, if they reply, they always say, oh, thank you so much. What do you do? Every single time. So, and then a lot of times, depending on, I'll usually say, are you on Facebook? 
I would say like, awesome. I can't wait to share more with you. Are you on Facebook? Because I'm a lot more personal and active on Facebook, I think. And so they can see like, a, you know, a lot more of who I am on Facebook, but also because I can voice message and I can't voice message on Instagram. I've only had a couple of people say no, but if they actually come to Facebook and we become friends, they've all signed up. So that's why I try to move them over to Facebook. It's just because like I said, if they can hear me talk, they're like, they can, they can hear my excitement about it. And they're like, Oh yeah. I like I, that girl today. She's like, I, she's in high school. She's 18. She's like, I've been looking for something like this. I'm getting ready to, to, um, I think she's going into her last year. Or I don't know. Anyway, she's like, I've been looking for something like this cause I want to go to med school and I don't want to have student loan debt. And I was like, all right, I got you girl. And she's excited. Um, okay. I see a question coming in, but I can't see it. Okay. What will I say in my voice message? Oh goodness. It's never the same. Um, <laughs> but basically short and sweet again, like, Hey, okay. So I'm a top income earner and, and leader with a health and wellness company. I usually don't even say it works because I want them to interact with me and ask me questions. So I really keep things super vague in everything I do. Um, I'll say, um, it's health and wellness company. You know, we're, we're in 22 countries and expanding. We're in a huge momentum stage. And what I do is help people look and feel their best. And I teach other people how to help people do the same and make money from home. And then I'll say, does that sound like something you're interested in? So I don't go into any pricing yet or anything. And if they come back and say, yeah, that sounds great. Like what would I need to do? Then I would say, you know, to get started is $99 for your kit, which you get four wraps from. You can use them and share your results for your customers, or you can sell them. And I can help you do that to make your money right back. And then I say, you know, I kind of just explained the website. I'm like, you know, we are so lucky because our company uh, provides our website. So it saves us thousands from making our own. And it's only $20 a month, but your first month is free. And then I kind of explained the auto ship thing. You know, I was like, that's how you use your products. And it's $80 a month. And then you can get a box of wraps, sell your wraps, make $100, da, da, da. Kind of just explain that. And then I'm like, that's it. We don't have commitments. We don't have quotas. We have the steps to make you successful. Um, but nothing happens if you don't complete those every single month. That's just what we'll, you know, strive to do. And then I say, I'm so excited to help you do this. I'm so excited to add you to our team because I think you're going to be an amazing addition. You're going to have so much fun and it's going to be awesome to do this together. So again, I put that belief in them. You're going to be amazing. You're going to be amazing. Um, because you have to tell people that, right? Yes. I mean, and I, and even talking about that, actually, like we'll get into that. But when I signed up, you guys, I was a, like, I was a handful, but obviously worked Danielle's time clearly, but it was one of those things. Like I did have questions, you know, and Danielle, anything I said, like, I was like, I'm nervous about losing money. Like I, I'm not nervous about trying something new or if I'm not good at it right away. Like I know I can learn. I'm a quick learner, but it was like, I, I was scared about that. And Danielle's like, you're not going to lose money. Like she would instantly say that to me, you know, or same thing, um, what you were just talking about Bonnie. And she was just like, what was another thing? Oh, I was like, what if I run out of people? And she's like, you're not going to run out of people because she's like in two weeks of doing this. Like literally I had people come out of the woodwork that I haven't talked to in years that are buying like that wouldn't have been on my, you know, mind to do that. And so it's like, also be okay. You guys like conquering what, what maybe might stop them. Like, that's not an excuse. It's not them saying like, no, I don't want to do this business. It's just that they're nervous about that. Like have some empathy and be like, I get it. So was I, you know, and I'm almost glad I was like that in the beginning, you guys, because I answer a lot of those questions or even in the end, like when I'm talking to somebody and I do a yo-yo conversation, just like Bonnie does, like, I don't want to do it all in one swoop, but I do say, you know, I say like, I asked if I'm horrible at this and I do not like it, like, am I stuck? And I remember Danielle's like, you're not like, you just turn stuff off. She's like, but you're not going to want to do that. Like, she's like, I'm telling you, you will never want to do that. And you guys, I say that all the time. Even if somebody doesn't ask me that I say, you know, worst comes to worst, you bought a box of wraps for $99. If you don't like it, which rarely does not happen, I just say, then you can turn all your stuff off, you know? So I think like you said, speak life into them, like believe in them because I mean, I didn't believe in myself thinking or nor did I believe that it was going to be here five and a half years from now or that it could be a complete career. Like that is not why I joined. And I remember even saying that to Danielle. I'm like, 
I'm not quitting nursing, so don't tell me that, you know? And she's like, oh, you don't have to. Like, it's totally fine because I loved my job. I loved it. I didn't do this for that, you know? But I love that you say that because I think it, I think it is super important. Um, I was just reading what somebody was writing. Word vomit. Um, oh, she's just saying about word vomit and scaring people away. Do yeah. you have advice on just keeping short? Just, you know, I used to do that in the beginning. And that's why um, I am, I coach like new groups. Um, I'll just start them and I call it like a top 20 group or whatever. And that's like the, the new group I'm working with. And then when they hit diamond, they kind of get out. But I do a lot of coaching in there because I think it helps because in the beginning you are so excited. You want to tell them every single thing right now. Like you're like, oh my gosh, I see it. Can't you see it? Deanna's on here right now. And I know she's <laughs> like that. She's such a rock star. Um, and she's the girl's on fire. I mean, completely on fire. And, um, you know, she, when she would ask me, like, right, she would say, okay, what do I say to this? And then she would never have to ask again. She writes it down in her notes section or, or whatnot, but reread it. You know, if you, if you type something or, or whatever out to send to somebody and then just like read it over, just like you do with your post, you should always read your post again before you post them. Right. And just be like, okay, if someone sent me this, how would I feel? And if you're, if you would feel overwhelmed, then don't send it like retype something else. But literally, just like I said, just keep it simple. Like, you know, in, in you guys as distributors, you can absolutely say I'm a leader with an amazing health and wellness company. You can say that a distributor, executive, Ruby, whatever. You can say that. Mm -hmm. And we're booming and we're a huge momentum. There's nothing wrong with you saying you're a leader. Nothing. If you are doing this company, you're a leader and you're on the road to leadership. So um, speak life into that. I remember as a distributor, people say, you know, what are, what's your rank? Oh, I'm almost Ruby. I wasn't even close. I didn't even have a distributor, but that's where I was going. So it didn't matter. I was almost, I was almost Ruby and I spent life into it. Right. And it didn't matter that it took four months. And that's the other thing, like in this process, like chasing your dreams, you're going to have a lot of things that like come in your road. Um, it's not going to look up and pretty all the time. I mean, I can honestly say, and I guarantee Sarah could say it, there's a lot of blood, sweat and tears that go into where we are. Um, but it's one of those things that, Again, if you have that reason why you're doing it, and mine was, I want to be home with my kids. Like someone, and I've said this the other day, but someone told me one time, like you get 18 summers with each child and then that's it. Then they're adults. So what are you going to do with that time? You know, and I chose to own mine. So whatever that takes, if that means sometimes in my business, I've got to go back and work like I did in the beginning. I'm all right with that. If that means, you know, other times I can be on vacation and barely get on my phone for a whole week except to help my team and send a few messages, but I, I got that option too because I bought my time. I put in the effort. It doesn't mean now I'm going to sit back and kick up my feet because my team is full of thousands of people and there are thousands of people in the world everywhere I go that need this too. So it's my job if God gave me this vehicle to share it with everyone that I can and I'm passionate about that. I love doing that. I never let the fear of what will someone think of me if I talk to them get in the way. Because if, you know, here's the other thing. Um, being confident when someone tells you no is, is so huge too. So here's, here's, here's the thing. Um, you know, someone I messaged, I really wanted on my team. And she was like, um, no, I'm not interested in that at all. And I was like, okay. And I mean, I, I'm trying to remember. I was think I was diamond. I don't think I was double yet. Um, and so I was like, okay, no problem. I said, I'm not going anywhere. And when, if anything ever changes in your life that you decide that you think this would be awesome, I said, you know where to find me. And I did like the winky face and the heart. So it's like that kill them with kindness, but it's like kill them with confidence because that told her, wow, she is serious about this crazy thing she's doing. And you know what y'all, she's on my team. So it just sometimes if people tell you, no, I know we want to take it personal, but like, don't let it. And the other thing I want to talk about things take people taking stuff personal. Um, you're going to have a lot of friends come into this business and you're going to have a lot of friends that quit. And I will tell you that I have five very, very good friends. One that even got to presidential. Now she didn't go anywhere else, but she just decided that she didn't want to do it anymore. Um, and we were very good friends. And, you know, it's easy to like get hurt by that. And she had some stuff happen in her life and that kind of stemmed it. But anyway, it's another story. 
it kind of hurt because I thought, wow, she'll leave me forever. She's going to be an investor. She was top like 50 and she's not, she's not in this business anymore. And I have my very best friend in the world that, that got into this business and it wasn't for her. You know, she, she couldn't like get out of her own way basically to do it. And that's okay. Like that's okay. It doesn't hurt. Um, it doesn't hurt our friendship just because they don't want to do it. And I know sometimes, especially as women, I know there's guys on here and y'all, y'all think very differently, but as women, we do take things kind of personal sometimes that we think, gosh, I thought that person would be on this journey with me forever. But like all the five legs that I had that took me to diamond, there's only one of those legs that's still with me that took me to ambassador. And so I want y'all to really think about that because you're going to have a lot of people. If, if, if this is going to be your career, like it is mine and Sarah's, you're going to have a lot of people that come and go. And that's just normal. And the, the faster that you recognize that that is just normal business, the better. So like if I was working on labor and delivery, okay, and Sarah works there with me. And then one day Sarah comes into work and she says, you know, Bonnie, I think I'm going to go do the ER. I'm just a little bit wanting something different. I, you know, I loved my time in, in labor and delivery, but I'm going to go to the ER. I'm going to say, all right, girlfriend, well, you know, keep me updated. Let's grab lunch. Let's stay in touch and best of luck. It's not going to like ruin my friendship or hurt my feelings that she didn't want to work in labor and delivery. And that's my career, right? Like I'm not leaving labor and delivery. I love it. I can't imagine wanting to work in the ER and it's not different. We have to look at it as business. And just because there are friends um, it doesn't change the fact that it's still business. It's awesome because we get to work with our best friends, but when it's their time to move on or it just wasn't for them forever, it's okay. It's okay to hug them and wish them well and, and go on with your business because you know where you're supposed to be and, and this is where you're supposed to be. So be okay um, with all of that and just realize that you're going to have a lot of things that come, you know, into your business and out of your business, good, bad, ugly, and different, but just stay the course. Like if you don't quit, you will be successful. How long does that take? Who cares? You know, who cares if it takes you 10 years to go triple diamond? That's still amazing money, right? That you wouldn't have if, if you quit. So just stay the course. Don't look around. Don't start comparing yourself. Like that's, Compar comparison is, is the joy thing. Like, just don't do it. Don't compare yourself with other people because you have no idea what um, they are doing. You have no idea, like, you know, why they're doing well or not doing well or, or whatever. But just stay your course, stay focused on what your goals are, um, and don't be distracted by outside noise. Don't be distracted by anyone saying you're going to fail. Don't be distracted by comparing yourself with someone who's moving faster and they started around the same time. You didn't do this for that, right? You, you did this for you and you did this for the reason why you wanted to do it. And that's your only focus. Your focus is that and how many people you can help and that's it. So if it takes you a year to go Ruby, that's all right. Cause you said you started for $500 a month and you got it, you know, right. and then put it on the gas. When you hit that, when you hit Ruby, then go Emerald. But don't get yourself so far ahead of, oh my gosh, well, I got to do my steps twice this month because so-and-so did it. No, go start a distributor, change their life, feel good about that, and then do it again. And just start thinking, just start, you know, have your big goals, but think on a small scale of how to get there. I'm going to sign one distributor. I'm going to sign one customer because I'm going to help those people. And then I'm going to do it again, and I'm going to do it again, I'm going to do it again. And that's it. That's it. It's just small, consistent efforts every single day that will take you very, very far. Right. And I, and I love that because I feel like so many people overcomplicate what you just said. Yeah. <laughs> so when I look back and I'm like, okay, when I, when, what I did to go double diamond was very part-time work, but I did do it daily. That's yeah. the thing. So I yeah. always tell people like, ask yourself, are you doing something every single day? I did not skip a day because honestly, I didn't want to skip a day. Like I was yeah. so excited, you know, when yeah. just like you had said, I'm like, I, I didn't want to make excuses, you know? So again, if you feel like you are one of those people that finds yourself making excuses, then you need to figure out a different why, because that is not motivating you enough, you know? Or I even say to my team, I'm not here to motivate you, but I can help you grow. I can teach you things that I have learned in this business. But as for motivation, like that comes within and for whatever it is that's driving you. Um, and so for me, I'm like you, like there's nothing, even as an ambassador diamond, 
that I think is too hard compared to what I was doing. Right. Um, what I thought was hard was missing holidays with my kids. Like yeah. that, that is one thing you guys, after having two years of not missing a single holiday and the first year, I think I was just so immune to them that when people were like, Hey, what are you doing for the fourth? I'm like, I, I don't even know. <laughs> yeah. Like I hadn't even made plans yet, you know? And then they're like, Oh, this hotel is booked or this is booked. And I'm like, yeah, because most people plan for the fourth, like a year ago. And I just wasn't used to that. And that is like one thing that I always ask myself, you know, on a day where maybe I hear 50 no's or on a day where I am supposed to be signing up two DTs and neither of them answer their phone. Like we all have those days, but those are the days where I'm like, it's okay. Like I'm going to go find those people that don't want to work a holiday. Just like I am never going to work another holiday again. But like there's days that same for me, you guys, it's just different. You know, there's some days where I get 30 minutes in the day in the beginning of the day. Cause that's what I always took. I always wake up a little bit early. Um, before my kids, same thing. I do the little self affirmations. You guys, I, speak positivity into my day, have a little sip of my coffee. You usually don't get it finished before I hear feet, but I get a little bit. And then I also just know, like, if my day gets crazy and my kid decides to take a corn on the cob skewer to my, <laughs> to my kitchen cabinet, like, I'm okay. I did do something that day. I don't feel guilty. I'm not worried. I'm in the moment. And at night, as soon as they go to bed, I can go back to work. And, and I like to do that. You know, I know that I'm like, Hey, I didn't, I didn't miss that moment. Like I was here for it. I'm going to laugh about it probably in three days, just not there yet. But, um, so I love that you said that you just have to break it down. You have to keep it simple. Do one at a time. Like if you feel overwhelmed, then it means you're trying to do too much at once. You know, you're not going to sign three DTs in one day. And if you do, it's cherry, it's like your cherry on the top of your ice cream. Like be excited about that. Or I always tell people too, you know, I'm messaging. I'm not waiting for everybody to come to me because honestly, even you just asking puts the thought in somebody's mind, like they think I can do this, you know? And so for the ones that do come to me, I tell them, I'm like, those are my fourth and my fifth distributors for the month, but those are not going to be my three, you know, for whatever it may be. So, um, I love that you said that too. So I think you're, you're, you're answering. I didn't even have to ask you very many questions. The things I had written down for you, I was like, Oh, I'm going to have her do this. Um, you know what? The one thing I did want you to say is, um, I feel like you and I know this, um, but like when you know you're going to promote, you know, you're going to promote, like it doesn't just happen on the 15th of the month or the 16th. Like we know on the first of the month, like we're going for something. And so I just kind of wanted to give people, I always try to give them like a snapshot of what that month looks like when you a hundred percent, like there's no question about, just like you said, I guess even when you were going triple, it's like, you were not going to give up. Like you said, I had already spoken out to the world. Like these people thought I were, were, you know, I told my team I was going triple, like those types of things. And I think so many times people are, it's not that they're okay falling a little bit short, but they almost gave up too soon. Like they don't finish out till the last minute. And I'm like that, like to promote, we do that, but we do that almost every single day. So kind of even if you can just give like a snapshot of what a month looks like when you're like, okay, so say we're on our 2.0. If we were, when we were going to go diamond on our 2.0, like what did your month look like knowing like I'm going diamond and I will be diamond by the end of June? Yeah. Same, I mean, same thing. You've got to like message and talk with everybody that is on that chart. Like you all have to be working together. So I would figure out, you know, and I watch stuff like who's signing Elsie's, you know, because if we're going to work as a team, I know I can sign a bunch of distributors. So I will find like that person that can sign a bunch of LCs um, because, you know, then obviously she can get the volume. So I reach out to her, same thing. Hey, do you want to go Ruby? All right. I want to work with you because you're working. I see you actively working. She hasn't signed distributors yet because again, that's a little bit tougher when you're new sometimes to get people to see the vision and come on in, but getting customers isn't. So it's awesome to work together um, in, in those, you know, situations. And, and then once that person goes Ruby that you kind of help them do, they get off to the races. But you know, when I say that too, like you should never depend on someone doing that. Um, if you get placed on great, but like I didn't build my business by getting placed on and I know Sarah didn't either. So, you know, it's like be thankful for it, appreciate it, but like don't expect it. Um, because we are here to like build our own business, but just getting a plan, even doing parties. Like I would, even people I wasn't personally, I didn't personally enroll if they were local, 
um, I would still go do their party. I would call them up and I would say, hey, you know, let's do a launch so we can get your volume so you can go executive or whatever it was. And I would go do those. And I was a crazy mad woman, you know, and now online makes it so great because people that are out of States, we can still do their launch parties. So I get like all their friends over at their house. And what we say is, um, okay, that, you know, I'll have the person say, okay, I'm brand new. And like my enrollers out of state. And so she's going to train me, but it's going to be really awkward if I'm like sitting here by myself. So I'm going to grab some wine. Will y'all come over and just like sit with me and let me like sample the products on y'all while she's talking about it in this little practice thing. And that's been really successful because all of a sudden their guards down there like, yeah, girl, I'll come drink some wine with you and you can do some spa stuff on me. Um, but then they get to hear me like talk about the products and they get to hear me like talk about how awesome the opportunity is. And we're signing a lot of distributors and customers. So I'm um, just doing those kinds of things to help every single buddy on your chart get to 400 by getting their own people. We shouldn't have to give customers to every single person that we sign. Let's teach them how to do it. You know, it's like, um, teach them how to fish, you know, same kind of thing. If you're not, um, okay, I'm scared to call people and blitz. Okay, well, let's talk about that because that is not scary, that was fun. So um, if, if you know the person well, then what I love to say when I call those people is, okay, and I'll just have fun with it, like depending on what I want them to do, but I'll say, all right, look, I trust your opinion. And so I would love it if you would be one of my product models for three months and like give me your honest feedback. I really want to see what you think about whatever it is, you know? Um, and sometimes I'll let them pick. I'll go, look, I don't even care what you choose. Just choose something. I'll give you my discount and you try it for 90 days and just give me your honest feedback. And then guys, if you want, you can offer to give them a product at the end of 90 days for sharing the feedback. Not for being a customer, because that's considered bribery, but you can say at the end of 90 days, if you give me your honest feedback and or pictures, I'll give you a product. And you can, you can decide what that is. You can let them choose. That's up to you. But it's a tax write-off. Um, the product is. And you're getting a loyal customer, and they're going to give you the feedback. Well, you can share that. And when you share that on your Facebook, you're going to get more customers. Or you can have them share it and tag you and then their friends see it and then they come to you. So there's a lot of ways. Like I love it when people say, Oh, I just don't know that many people that that's even more exciting. Go meet more people. Like you can get on social media and sign up somebody in Australia tomorrow that goes ambassador. Like think about that, but it's not going to happen if you're sitting here hoping it will happen. Like you've got to be actively working on it. I know I see Jenny on here and Kara's on here. They both have international teams from Instagram. Um, and so, and that's what they do though. They're, they, they at work it every single day, every single day. And it's fun. It's exciting. And so I love meeting new people. I love thinking, who am I going to sign up, you know, today from what place? Like I have like a list of states that I want to get into. And so I will target those states, um, on Instagram and on Facebook to try to find people in those states because I want to travel. And so I make it fun, like, all right, if I get a booming team in, and I'm not going to tell you where, because I want a booming team there, but <laughs> it could be wherever you want it to be. But I'm like, if I get a booming team there, how fun would that, those trips be? Like, I want to go there so bad. So then I target those states to try to get people, you know, to sign up in those states. So make it fun. Like, if you're not having fun with this, then we got to work on that. Because if you're having fun with it, it's, I, and don't think that I think it's fun every day, because that, that's not true. I definitely have my days where I want to like turn off my phone and put the covers over my head like Pam Souther says. I do, but that's okay. And then the next day I'm going to get back up and I'm going to say, okay, what's going to be great in my business today? Who am I going to talk to today that I'm going to impact or is going to impact me? Because that happens too, right? We meet people that come into our business every day that like motivate us. Like take Deanna. I mean, Deanna has like relit this fire in me just because of her and her team and they're absolutely killing it. And I just, I love it. I love running with people that are like that every day. She's like positive, you know, in our little team chat group and all right guys, I've got a customer, I've got a distributor. Who's, who's next. And it's just, it's friendly competition and it's fun. So if you're not having fun, I highly suggest that like, you find a sideline 
or, you know, someone on your team that you're like kind of close to to run together and get that going back and forth. All right, I'm going to get, you know, three customers this week. What are you going to do? And then like tell each other and kind of just fuel that fire together because it is very difficult. And this is why we always say get to events. It is very difficult to stay motivated um, by yourself. You have to be inspired and, you know, getting around people that are inspiring and that fire you up will fire you up. So when I'm down or thinking, gosh, I've had a bad week for business. I don't feel like doing this anymore. We all get in those places, y'all. We all get in them. I guarantee Sarah does. I, and I'm telling you, I do. But what do I do? I do a Zoom like this or I get to an event or I listen to like Tony Robbins talk or somebody like Stephen Furtick, somebody that inspires me and motivates me and tells me, don't quit on your dream, you know, <laughs> then I feel like running again. And so it's okay to have those days, but don't let it take you out of the game. Like don't, you know, if you, if you strike out when you're playing baseball, it doesn't mean that you should never play baseball again. It means that you need to practice harder and you need to get up there and you need to hit a home run. Um, and that's life guys. That's life in, you know, everything. Um, you know, if you're, if you're married, I mean, gosh, my husband drives me nuts, like drives me nuts, but I'm not going to be like, get out the door. I don't want to be married. <laughs> like you're like, Hey, you're driving me nuts. This is what you're doing. Let's fix this. You know, it's fine. Like it's, it's, that's life. And I always tell my kids every time they complain about something, I'm like, all right, here's the deal. This is in heaven. So we're going to have to learn how to cope with life. And it's the same thing with business. All right. It's not perfect. It never will be perfect. But all you can do is what you can do and, and know that when you go to bed at the end of the day, you shouldn't be laying there thinking, I didn't actually do something for my business. You should go to bed resting assured that you gave your business everything you could that day. Just like you should go to bed resting assured that you gave your family everything you could that day, right? And at the end of the day, that's all you can do. And if you're in a planting season and you feel like you're working, 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 and it's not paying off, guess what? Your harvest is coming. Just keep watering. Just keep watering. I promise you it will come. Yes, I love that. And, and you also just have to know, like, not everything is going to go exactly like you expected. But on the flip side of that, like, it's not always a negative thing either. Like, I didn't think that, I, you guys, my goal was to make $500 in a year. My first goal for my first three months of this business was to break even. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, I hadn't tried any oh, of so it was just kind of like, it, that's just where I was. But you guys, guess what? It wasn't expected. But when I went Ruby in six weeks, like you welcome those things, right? With open arms. But that is not what I expected. So at the same time, you know, you might have some things that kind of make you whatever, kind of knock you off your horse a little bit. And it's not exactly how you wanted it to go. But on the flip side of that, you know, even like Bonnie talked about, like her checks were a certain amount at triple, but then all of a sudden she gave herself this like, 20 some thousand plus dollar raise in a month. Like she was not expecting that, but you're, you welcome those with open arms, you know, and as much as you welcome the positive things that are unexpected, you also have to know to get some of those things. You're going to welcome some that maybe aren't what you wanted it to happen, but it, it's okay. Like it's okay. You know, and same for me, you know, Bonnie, it's so funny that you said that because for triple, you know, again, comparison, it was like, you can, you have some sideline sisters that they're talking about these crazy above average checks and mine were not that either. But all of a sudden when I went, you know, presidential, it was like this insane raise that was way above average. And you know, you guys, I look back and I'm like, what did I do different that month? Like, what did I do different? And really you guys, when I looked back, like we popped, I don't even know, I think like eight diamonds in one month. And that didn't happen just in one month. Like those are people that I've been working, some of them for six months for that, some of them for three months, some of them for four. Like it just so happened. But again, you know, focusing on how many people that you can help, no matter where they're at in your map, like I didn't care. Like these eight diamonds weren't all in one spot to help me go, to help me go prez. They were just all over the map and we were having fun doing it. And we were working hard. Like we were working super hard. So um, just like I said, you're going to have some of the unexpected that you don't like, but you also will get knocked with some unexpected that you will be more than liking. So um, make sure you're always here to stick out for that and see those things through too. So, okay, Bonnie, it is like 7 that really quick. Okay. Really? Yes. Yes. I, I, I always tell this to my team that I, I got to share it with your team. So mm -hmm. my husband and I own cafes 
And um, I don't know if y'all know much about like traditional business, but in traditional business, most businesses fail within five years, okay? If you break even at five years, and mind you, we have millions of dollars and not millions, but over a million invested in our businesses, okay? And we own some of the land and everything like that. So it's a huge risk to like get it started. Um, but if you can, if, if you break even at the five year mark, like you're considered a success. So that's not even profiting. And like the amount of time and energy and the things that you have to do to get that business off the ground, like, you know, you've got to order the food and you're taking a risk on, is the food going to sell or we have to throw it out and you've got to train people and you train managers and it's like, that's a revolving door. People come and people go, they come and learn from my husband and then they'll go up to it like a corporate job, you know? And that, again, that is, that's business. That's just how it works. So my point in this is to think about if we're actually going to give a business, which is what this is, a fair shot, first of all, let's thank our lucky stars. It only costs us $99 to start with this because if it doesn't work, gosh, we have not lost. Where if like the cafe is spelled, I mean, that's like up the creek, right? Without a paddle. Okay. So $99 is nothing. But if we're going to be honest in our business for ourselves, then we should give this business five years of effort, consistent effort, working, you know, doing all the things that you're taught to do before you can even make a decision if your business was successful or not, right? And then like to make it 10 years in restaurant industry is like huge and we're at 12 now. So, and obviously very successful, but that was such a risk going into it. So I just want to tell y'all that like, Yes, a, a lot of people come and they quit way too soon. And it makes me so sad because sometimes it's within weeks or months or they never even started or maybe a couple of years and they're not where they thought they'd be. But I just want to remind you, like, you're building a business and it can, it can take a while. It totally can take a while. But what if you quit at year one because you were Ruby and you thought you'd be diamond by now, but what you didn't know was the next year you were going to hit triple diamond. You were going to hit your momentum. You just hadn't done it yet. That like, don't let that happen. Stay with it. Business is going to have ebbs. Business is going to have flows. And all we have to do is ride on when we're, we're in an ebb, we work a lot harder so that when we get the flow, it's that much greater. You know, it will be amazing and greater when you, when you ride all of it. And we do that in our business too. When we're slow, we go out, we hand out coupons, we do specials, we do all kinds of stuff to get those people in the door, right? Same kind of thing. When, if you're, if you're in a season that is slower, get out there, talk to more people, add more people to your network, all of that. If you're in a flow and you're booming right now, do not lay off the gas, like go all the way to as far as that momentum will carry you because that is another like detrimental thing I see people that let happen to their business. And then last thing I want to share with y'all, my very favorite quote from Hope Floats. Okay, beginnings are scary and endings are hard, but it's what in the middle that's what is in the middle that counts. What I want to say is you guys are all in your middle. So make it count. Mm -hmm. I love that. So you just like rocked their entire night just so <laughs> just so you know. Oh, good. Well, we didn't get your story, so we're going to have hey, to do another one. <laughs> that's okay. That's okay. No, and I didn't want to cut anything short. And like I said, you know, you guys, this is stuff that Bonnie and I, like, we talk back and forth, like, through our entire journey. So, like, there's times where we, where we remind each other of things, or there's times that maybe I'm in momentum and, you know, we're trying new ideas, and Bonnie's, she's never too proud to say, hey, what are you doing? Or, you know, give me some new ideas. Or I want to bring something new to my team. You guys never be too proud to ask. Like that is one thing that I have never been in this business. Like I enjoy learning. Um, I'm, I'm a student always to this business and there's never a dull moment. Like there's, it's never to me where I'm like, Oh, it's the same thing every single day. I never feel like that. Cause I'm not talking to the same people every day. I'm not saying the same things. I'm, you know, meeting new people. We're bringing in new people, but if you can just give your best. And like you said, if you need a moment, like give yourself an hour, like go let your phone actually charge to a hundred percent. And you would be amazed that when you go check your phone and it's actually hundred percent, how bad you're ready to already go message somebody that you thought of. Like it doesn't leave you, but sometimes you just need that moment and that's okay. You know, and that's something that you also have to learn because that's something, you know, five and a half years or almost what you're, you're almost five years. I hit five years at the end of April. So 
it's like for that, like you will, you can find your balance and it's not going to always look the same, you know, every year or depending on our kids' ages or whatever they're going through. But we just adjust our sales and that's what's amazing about this business is it allows you to do that 100%, not the other way around where you have to adjust your sales and your family's sales to what your job is. So, I mean, I'm so incredibly grateful for that. And like I said, I will always work super hard for that. So, Bonnie, thank you so, so much. I appreciate you. Um, and like I said, I will, and even if you want to use this, I'll just stop the recording, but I will send it to you as well. Sure. And then we'll have to do another one so I can get your story. Okay. That sounds good. All right. Well, thank